10 hut hey guys general splatton here today i want to do a unboxing of the badger patriot 105 airbrush um, this is not going to be a review i'll do that later on this is an unboxing but i hope you'll stay tuned because at the end of the video i share my thoughts about why it exactly that i bought this airbrush so i hope you'll watch for that now first off i got this brush off of ebay uh, it is a new airbrush. I paid $79.90 for it, American. Um, retail is $119 American, I believe. So, uh, uh, you, you just go on eBay and do searches and you'll find it. Alright, let's get right into it. Uh, first off, you get the instruction book that gives you uh, general information about the company, the airbrush, uh, parts involved with it, and how to operate it. Okay, then we have a, a warranty card here, warranty registration. Now, and here's the airbrush itself. Okay, good sturdy case. You open it up. All right, you see a nozzle here for the needles, or the needle, and then the airbrush itself. Um. It's heavier, much heavier, I think, than the uh, knockoffs I've gotten from uh, China. Good uh, trigger pull on it. Nice large cup. Now, one drawback, at least for me and and my clumsiness using this thing, but uh, that's the way they designed it. Let me get up, try to get up close so you can see. The needle is exposed out the front. Come on, out the front of the airbrush. It goes past the tip of it. See? So I gotta be careful <laughs> to watch for that. Alright, now this particular airbrush has a very large needle. It's uh, 0 0.75, 0 0.76. Uh, larger than most people uh, have in their brushes. Usually it's a 0 0.3 or 0 0.5, somewhere around, around in there. But I saw that as a benefit with this particular airbrush it'll be a larger nozzle means when I don't get paint mixes right uh, they'll be able or more able to flow through the, the nozzle tip I'm still learning I have in no way mastered airbrushing and so this is going to be another tool to help me continue on my process and journey of learning how to airbrush and airbrush effectively so that's the reason for this airbrush it's very well constructed by what I see uh, does have a good balance to it so uh, I like that um, I've already mentioned about the weight of it but uh, it doesn't seem like that's really going to affect uh, the fatigue factor or anything like that so now let's just discuss briefly why I went with this particular airbrush and also I want to say up front to all those people that put up reviews of this airbrush I really appreciate it it was very helpful in helping me making making my decision to buy this particular one um, first off number reason number one is price $79.90 for a name brand uh, airbrush I thought it's a good deal brand new not a used one as I've said so that's you know price point first up second is this is a obviously a name brand airbrush you know by what I can tell and what I can research Badger's a good company that stand behind their products and they make quality products so uh, so it comes with a warranty that's a under number two and B under number two is availability of parts when something breaks I'll have parts available that I can get now number three is like I've developed a kind of a plan I think that's going to serve me well over, uh, in the um, years to come is this is a brush that I'm going to learn on and, and it can do detail work uh, it, it says the uh, website says it can do pencil thin lines that's probably with a you know a very seasoned expert airbrusher doing that <laughs> but it can do s some detail work but uh, I in you know, you know this is going to be more suited for you know base coating and things like that and some you know light duty detail work but I envision this airbrush is eventually becoming my um, base coating airbrush you know where I uh, prime models or I base coat models or terrain or car models tank models whatever and the 
so this will kind of segue into being my you know just general purpose airbrush for you know getting models uh, coded for more detail work to follow and then my thoughts is is that I, eventually once I've learned some more and practiced some more with this airbrush is getting a second airbrush that's going to have a much smaller needle and be able to handle intricate fine detail that's my thoughts behind um, um, my plan is that have this brush that will be my base coating brush and then have another brush to do fine in, uh, detail work uh, to get up close and personal on models so that way I'll only need two airbrushes now I realize that I could have gotten the same type of results from getting an airbrush that could have interchangeable needles needle sizes to kind of fulfill all all the uh, rolls in one airbrush but I wanted to go this route so I've got a good basic airbrush for base coating that's going to be a, a they can do detail work but then I'll get a more intricate uh, featured model for close-up uh, intricate work of uh, painting highlights and shadows and that type of thing so that's my thought process about why getting uh, uh, or my plan for two airbrushes that way that's all I ever need I won't be one of those people that wakes up one day and realize he has ten airbrushes <laughs> and got a thousand dollars in them <laughs> so that's my thought process is behind. nothing is wrong with that I might end up with uh, ten someday myself uh, but uh, you know this way it can be you know I can get by with two airbrushes and only other have to buy anything else just because I want to. So that's my thoughts. Uh, share your thoughts. If you have any questions, let me know. Well, this is General Splatten for, uh, and you've been briefed. And I'll talk again. Dismissed.